in a previous video, and I'll put a link to it up here. I covered making top bar swarm boxes. Now, those were made strictly out of leftover pallet wood that I had from making my top bar hives. And this round, I am going to make new top bar hives. Um, I ran out of pallet wood, so I will be doing commercial dimensional lumber. We're using eight foot one by 12s, and I purchased three of them to make two hives. So I'm gonna run you through the entire process, including coming up with the dimensions for the polygon at the end. Should be simple, stay tuned. To work out our angles for the end, we're going to need a pencil, a straight edge, and a square. In this case, I'm using a large framing square, and a tape measure. Now, all of my hives are the same length, and that would be the length of one pallet board. If I run my tape measure, it's three foot eight and one eighth inches. So I'm going to have to cut my sideboards and all of that to that length. The other thing is, I like to use the pallet boards on bottom. Now, pallet board is five and a quarter inches wide. which makes this a one by six roughly. So we're gonna need to design the bottom at five and one quarter inches and we'll use this pallet board to set that. So when we calculate this out, you want your top dimension for your side to be three times your bottom board. Well, at least I, that's the numbers I'm working with. If we have 5.2, Two five five and a quarter inches times three we have 15 and three quarter inches across the top we're gonna start by coming from the end and measuring 15 and three quarter inches okay we're going to need half of that distance which is 7.875 inches. Seven and 875, we'll say seven and seven eighths. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this square up here on that dot, line the top up along with the board, and we are gonna draw a line right down the middle of the board. This gives us our center line for our top board. Now we know that this is five and a quarter inches. We know it's five and a quarter. 2.62 So we're gonna come at 2.62 inches, which is just slightly more than a half an inch. And I'm just gonna eyeball this and put these two marks in. Then to double check this, I'm gonna measure from here to here, two and a half, and from here to here. So the whole thing needs to shift this way just a little bit. And what I'm doing is shifting it just a hair each time and then double checking my measurement. So that's Two and five eighths, two and five eighths, okay. So that comes out to two and five eighths inches on either side of that line. And we're gonna take from here and draw a line up to the corner. There we go. And then we're gonna take this dot here and connect it to this dot here. And now we have our basic shape. Now again, I'm gonna double check this, and we're always double checking our measurements before we cut. We're gonna put this board at the bottom, and it is spot on for the width. 
So we now have one end board laid out. When we make a hive, we're going to cut three of these end boards. We're going to cut three of these end boards because we're going to use one at either end of the hive and then the third one is used as a backer board to reduce the size of the hive that the bees have access to. All right, so for this cut, we are going to use a standard circular saw, sometimes referred to as a skill saw. Now, the way I like to set this up is so that it's just slightly thicker than the board. Um, this is scrap wood, so I don't care if I cut into it. And what I'm going to do Cut that first angle. Slide that board up a little bit. We're going to come back and cut the second angle. We now have our master end board cut. Since we will be marking these with using a single board to mark it, I'm going to mark this as master. Slide this board forward, turn this around. And we get our second board, but we only have to cut one side. And there's our second board. Now I'm building two hives right now, so this is going to be six of these boards cut out. So we're left over a piece of wood here. Is it big enough? No. It's actually shorter than the length needed for the side. However, That one is the width of the swarm boxes. So I could get a swarm box end out of this or side out of this. I could also throw this into the table saw and rip it down into crossbars for the top of the hive. So we will make use from the scrap. I went and grabbed two more eight foot one by 12s. These are gonna be used for the sides. And the reason is that the length that the hives end up being is I can get two sides out of one board with about four inches left over. If we're going to measure this with a tape measure, it's three foot eight and one quarter inches. So what we'll do is take the tape measure and run it up here. Three foot. Three foot eight inches. And... One quarter, put a tick on one side of the board. Now we're going to run it up the other side. Three foot, eight inches, and one quarter. So now we can take that down here a little bit. Take the square, connect those two dots, and draw us a line. 
that gives us our length. Now that we have our length set, all we need to do is run the saw along the line and cut this. So I have one side cut, and again, since we're going to use one side to do the measurement for the next one, we're going to mark this as a master board so we know that this is the same one we're using every time. In a nutshell, run it down, line up the cut ends. Make sure it's square. Draw a line. That's the next cut line. And we'll turn this board around to make it a little easier to cut. Leftover scrap. Not sure that this scrap can be used for much because you don't want to cut this way for a top bar because if you cut across the grain, the top bar will bow and warp. You always want to cut with the grain for a top bar. So right now that's scrap. And this is our first sideboard. We've now cut four sideboards and six of the end pieces out of three eight foot one by twelves. We're going to need to assemble these. I'm using some leftover pallet wood for the bottom of the box because I have it. Um, otherwise you would need to buy, um, we'll say an eight foot one by six to do the bottom. And again, I'm assembling this one with screws. These are one and a half inch number eight screws. Hardest part of the assembly is putting this on the end here. So what I'm gonna do for that, I'm gonna take two of these screws and I'm gonna come into this board, start them off. One at the bottom. I did that right. Do one at the bottom and one at the top. Since I'm not working with, since I'm not working with pallet wood, I'll only use three screws for this. So we'll go ahead and put one in the middle. Right about there. Because in pallet wood, two pieces are joined together. I went ahead and put four screws into it. So if there's two screws in each piece, but with a long piece or a wide piece like this, you don't really need that. Now, take my container of glue. We're going to run a bead of glue right down the end of this board. I like to glue and screw these units together. You're going to line up at the bottom of the board just like that. Grab my drill. I can get that first screw in. Now, pull this up tight and get that second screw in, then we can come in and do that middle one. Now, all right, I have one inboard in place. Do the other inboard. We can turn this hive around and repeat. 
Now, stickers don't really matter with this, but I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my pocket knife and pull that staple out. Again, three screws. We're gonna put one at each end. One in the middle. And I'm actually running my finger on the underside of the board so that I can feel when the tip just barely pokes through because uh, it helps me when I set the board in place so it doesn't move as much. All right, so the other end goes this way. So we need to make sure we get the ends facing the right direction. And go ahead and run a bead of glue down that inboard. You're gonna line up with the bottom. Pull the board in. There we go. Get that lined up, and then the third screw goes in. All right. So that board is in. When I line up with the bottom, I'm lining it up here to the bottom board, but I'm also lining it up here on the side to make sure that it all lines up. Now that gives us two ends on this hive already. So we're going to line it up on this end first and then I'll turn it around so you can see the other end and see how I line that up. And come in with some glue. Right now, I'm just holding it together. Oh, 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 let's set that down. It shifted. All right. And I'm using my body to brace it. Run that first screw in. This top end still lined up. Run the second screw. And the middle one. All right. That's one end finished. Rotate this around. Now this never lines up. We need it out and up and you really do have to do some pulling on it. I am gonna move around to the other side of the camera. There we go. So, first things first, let's go ahead and run a bead of glue. Let that glue kind of run down a little bit and fill in the spot while I put this first screw in. First screw. On the final end is always on the bottom. It makes it easy to line up this bottom piece. And then run that screw in to pull it all together. Now that that's in, come back and set the screw up on the top. And I'm, I'm using my fingers to pull this inboard out so that I can get it to line up with the screw or line up with the end of the board. You put one in the middle. Okay, let's 
turn this up on end. This is upside down to the way the hive would normally sit. But the reason for this is I'm going to use this as a bottom board. This is the this is a board from a uh, pallet and it's because I cut it to the right length this fits perfectly. So I'll run my bead of glue on it. And I'm going to run two screws down into this bottom board. I'm going to center it up just a little bit because there's a little bit of a gap there. There's one. As we did with the swarm boxes, I'm going to go down to the opposite end and square this board up first and run a screw. Caddy cornered from the first screw. And then we'll come back and do the other two. There's one. Two. And that is a top bar hive. Now, I still have to cut top bars for it. The backer board, because it's cut the same as both ends, fits perfectly down inside to seal it off. So let's get this back a little bit where you can see. It fits perfectly inside to seal it off. It also comes up level with this top. Let's go forward comes level with this top so when you go and set a piece of plywood on it if it's here or in the middle because you've uh, expanded the hive a little it adds a little extra support when the hive is full this board actually sits at the back of the furthest back in the hive thank you for watching this uh, episode on how to build top bar hives if you enjoyed this episode please give it a thumbs up um, share it with your friends if you're not a subscriber please go ahead and click that subscribe button and catch more videos similar to this one thank you